This is part two in the personal prevention experience uh, series. This is uh, another uh, Bail Deneen slide. It's talking, there, it makes a couple of good points. The first one is the focus on education. Again, education is the biggest part of this. It's like uh, the old Sims commercial and many other commercials. The best customer, the best client, the best patient is clearly somebody that knows what's going on, is the educated, smart consumer. Now, <clears throat> another thing that's very helpful to see on this slide is something that you wouldn't notice unless it's pointed out or you're already aware of it. This is a, a, um, a picture of an artery with blood flow going through it. Now, uh, this middle one is the best one to look at. The bottom one is, has got a couple of problems. But the middle one is, shows the blood going through the artery, and it shows that the plaque is not in the lumen. The plaque is inside the artery wall itself. And in fact, the vast, the vast majority of that plaque is LDL. So that's what leads to a lot of the misperception that cholesterol in your diet, or LDL, um, is what causes plaque. Again, that's wrong. Here's what actually happens. You get inflammation of that lining right there, which you can hardly see. It's a single cell layer. It's called the intima or uh, endothelium of the artery. When you get inflammation of that, you get holes and nicks in it. Um, then LDL, cholesterol that's in the blood, actually goes through those holes and nicks and lodges in that artery. Let's uh, go to another issue, um, event reality. Here's the major point that, uh, that this makes, that 99% of all plaque is growing away from the hole, in other words, in the artery itself. Now, most heart attacks and strokes are caused by plaque that is not blocking the flow of blood. Again, we, the obvious common logic is that it's like hair clogging the drain of a shower. Or a, or a bathtub. It's inside the lumen. That's not what happens. It's inside the, the artery wall, as we just showed on the last slide. That's why you can't predict a heart attack or a stroke. As we've said many times, half of heart attacks, uh, the patient first finds out about it by dying. Now, <clears throat> here's a picture of a, or a diagram of a clean artery with no disease. The major areas that we want to look and think about are the intima or that um, endothelial layer. It's what keeps things like cholesterol from soaking into the artery, uh, the artery wall itself. Then the media is the second layer. It's a muscle layer that provides strength uh, to keep that intima layer, which is so thin, it would blow apart with the pressure that's inside uh, a typical artery. We don't worry about the adventitia, it just keeps the artery in place. Um, it's when this intima gets uh, irritated and burned and has holes in it that cholesterol starts to seep through those holes. The cholesterol then can't go on through the media, so it gets stuck between the intima and media layers. <clears throat> Here are, are a couple of images in these next two slides of the progression of this disease. The first slide just, I mean, the first uh, on the left basically shows a normal artery, an artery without plaque. Each successive cut shows more and more plaque. It also talks about uh, some of the enzymes that you start to see. On the inflammation panel, for example, you'll see LPPLA2, plaque 2. If you haven't taken the uh, course, the free inflammation course, go back to our videos. Uh, just Google Ford Brewer inflammation course. Uh, it should come up. If you haven't, make a comment below and I'll help you find the, uh, find the course. But LPPLA2 is one of the labs that we look at in the inflammation uh, panel. That starts to happen along this area, as shown here. Uh, it's, uh, it's an enzyme released by the immune system as it's trying to get this plaque out of here. Your immune system recognizes that plaque and knows this should not be happening. 
It's when this happens over on the right that you get a heart attack or stroke. You get uh, damage. The, the immune system attacks this plaque. That's where you start to see these little red spaces. And actually, it's green, uh, some enzymes called MPO, just like plaque 2. I'll show you that in, a, in the next slide. But you start getting this, what we call necrotic or dead material, because the immune system is uh, releasing enzymes which um, degrade and dissolve this plaque, trying to get rid of it. But here's the problem. That, inf that necrotic material, if it releases out into the bloodstream, as this has in this diagram, will cause a clot. So it's not, and the plot, the clot, if it's big enough and goes to the heart, causes a heart attack. If it's big enough and goes to the, um, to the brain, it causes a stroke. Now, <clears throat> so it's not the plaque itself that's blocking off the artery wall and causing the heart attack, like mo mo so many people think, again, just using common logic. That's why you can't predict it by doing a stress test or uh, uh, angiograms. You cannot predict these. It's because of this acute episode where you get the leak. Now that's called, and you'll hear it multiple times, we call that a hot plaque. Let me go back to a comment. Uh, well, actually, we'll make that, we'll go back to it a little bit later. I mentioned that some of the, um, the drawing in the artery wall is a little bit different uh, may not all be red as you start getting into some of the release of these enzymes. In fact, some of them are green. Pardon the, um, what's the word um, I would use? Uh, maybe ugly imagery, I'm gonna, but I'm gonna connect a couple of dots here. We're talking about MPO here, myeloperoxidase. It's another enzyme, another uh, lab test. It's green. And you may recognize this, when you have a cold or a child has a cold and, and they have mucus coming out of their nose, it's got a greenish tint to it. That's myeloperoxidase. And it's the same thing. It is enzymes that are released by white cells. A certain type of white cell releases MPO. Another type of white cell releases plaque 2. So those are some of the key tests within the inflammation panel. And as you see in this uh, image, again, it's the release of this uh, liquid plaque with all of these uh, inflammatory markers in it that causes a clot, which causes the heart attack. Now, that was all images. Let's just look at the, um, the reality. Uh, this, is a, this is an artery. Um, this is, and this is a, a picture of a real one. It's on a microscope. They've cut it uh, sideways like this, so you can see the lumen, which is inside. This is where the blood flows. You can see this red tint. That's that media layer that we talked about earlier. That's the muscle. That's the structure that holds, holds the artery. Now, <clears throat> this thin layer right here is the intima. You can barely see it. But right here, you can see it very well. In fact, there's nothing but intima right here between this area, this light-colored area, and this lumen, where the, where the artery uh, blood flow is. All of this is plaque. But we can tell by looking at it, it is this part of the plaque is stable. It's a waxy substance. It's not going to break loose. But look again, and let's look deeper at this um, inflamed plaque. This was liquid. It's inflamed plaque. And the reason we know that is that it's liquid is it has retracted some away from the rest of the tissue when you put it in the, uh, on the slide preparation. So now you begin to realize you've got hot liquid plaque with those uh, inflammatory um, uh, immune uh, cytokines, biomarkers, in, the, uh, in this plaque right here, and the only thing standing between that and the flow of the blood is that intima layer. Now, if that breaks through, it can cause a clot. And that's exactly what happened here. This is a different type of preparation, but as you can see, it's a, it's a real artery. 
In this one, the, uh, the muscular or artery wall, the media layer, is this more clear looking area. This yellowish waxy looking stuff is uh, stable plaque. These uh, brown areas are uh, hot liquid um, plaque areas. And look what happened here. Uh, again, as you can see, this is a Baldanine uh, uh, slide. Brad and Amy tend to call this intima, the tennis court, because your body has uh, several, uh, has the equivalent of several tennis courts. But here's the, the most important part. Look at how that has cracked. This area used to look like this one. And the intima cracked and this liquid came out. Now that's not the liquid. That black thing is a clot. The clot formed when that hot li liquid plaque, um, when this crack happened in the intima layer and the hot liquid plaque touched the bloodstream, therefore co causing the clot. That clot went on back up into this area, and in fact, as you can see, well, you can't see. The reason they're taking this artery out is because this patient has died. He's died from a heart attack, and it came from the clot that was formed here. One other thing to note is that you've got this brown spot up here. As you can see, this inflammatory process is a systemic process. Um, if you find it in one place, you'll find it in a bunch of others. Now that's uh, logically very helpful uh, for us to remember, and here's why. We take a look for hot plaque in the neck using the CIMT, carotid intima media thickness test. So what we're looking for on the carotid intima media thickness test is the thickness between this intima and media area. And as you can see in different parts of the artery, it varies. So that gives you some of the clue regarding uh, some of the challenges in getting an appropriate and accurate CIMT. Another thing that the, you see when we're looking for CIMT is we're looking for these hot liquid plaque areas. On this, um, on this image, again, we're looking for that CIMT, the intima media thickness area, and we're also especially looking for these hot uh, liquid uh, areas. When you get a, um, a normal carotid uh, ultrasound, they would show, this would show as negative because it doesn't really, a normal carotid uh, ultrasound, as opposed to a CIMT, the normal one, the routine one, the 99% of them that are done out there, is only positive if you have uh, obstruction of the flow. And that, cre that takes up to two-thirds of the decrease of the size of the lumen. So these are some of the, um, the things that help you understand a little bit more about what's going on with um, a veiled anine type of evaluation, some of my preventive evaluations, and it starts to get into uh, what actually causes a heart attack. If you've made it this far, as usual, thank you so much for your interest. Thanks, and if you hit that uh, subscribe or like button, it makes a big difference. Um, an even bigger difference happens when you share. You can share on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Pinterest. When you do that, it makes a big difference in terms of the algorithm. It s sends um, this to other people realizing that humans think this is interesting information and helpful. Um, thank you again.